Hey guys, today we show another restoration project, and uh, this video is also for Jelf, who owns this really nice 73 Mini Moog. So Jelf just kind of go over it, show you that everything's functioning, and just give everybody another demo of a Mini Moog Model D. Um, this one here, it was a little different because it was dead. Um, when I got it, I couldn't even plug it in because the cord was in such bad shape. The first thing I did was take it all apart and replace the power cord. And uh, this also brings up a good topic on power cords and vintage synthesizers in general. So this one here, you can see where it went into the unit, and you can see just how frayed everything was. And there's actually exposed wiring, which is why I replaced it. Um, let's see if I can find the wiring. Yeah, right there's some exposed wiring right there. If my camera can pick it up there, I don't know if my camera will focus in on that. Well, my camera's work, acting kind of weird this time. But uh, anyways, there's exposed wiring there, and uh, sometimes when you when you get these old synths, the cord may look okay, but uh, one thing you can do is you can do a flex test and see if you can actually see this one starting to split right there where I flexed it. So that's a good way to tell if your cord is, is in decent shape or not. Um, but now in some of these old, old cords, the outside will look fine, but the internal... Uh, insulation will break down between the wiring and uh, usually with that you'll start seeing smoke out one of the end of the wires and or you'll see a spot start burning open which I have seen that uh, that's that's not uncommon sometimes with some of these early 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 synthesizers especially in the 60s and 50s stuff uh, more so in the 50s and 60s but you do see it in, in some of the old 70s stuff just depending on how it was stored um, but anyways replace the power cord uh, got it, got it where I could power it up, and uh, I noticed that I had no sound. So I took the scope and I started scoping oscillators and filter and make sure the audio path was working. And I got all the way to the VCA, and it was the VCA that was dead in this in this particular mini Moog. And what it was is um, there's a transistor associated with the contour input, and what it does it converts voltage to current. And so it had gone bad. And then later on in my calibration procedure, I found out that the VCA still had a problem. Um, the second VCA, I could not balance it. And um, what I found there is you had a transistor that had uh, open on the emitter. So it was just a diode between, um, it was collector and base. And so what I did, I went on and matched a brand new set of, of transistors for the second VCA. And... Um, installed them, calibrated it, and it's working fantastic. So it took care of all the issues with the um, with the VCA. Um, but really that, that was the, the primary issue. The rest of it is just what I typically do to these things. I went through, uh, did preventive maintenance, installed the dead zone mod, which I'll be explaining that in a minute. Um, calibration, full calibration. Um, just took care of anything and everything that needed to be taken care of. Rebuilt the keyboard assembly, cleaned the contact buses, Clean the contacts, adjusted the keys, new key bushings. Everything's aligned, so it's it's got the full treatment. And in this particular unit, it was really, really, really dry. This wood had uh, had really uh, became dry. So I, I spent a lot of time conditioning this wood. And it turned out really nice. I'm very happy with it. I probably put about four coats of oil and just let it soak it in, wipe it down to another coat, and uh, would let it soak overnight. And eventually it, get started, it stopped drinking some of the oils and I was able to wipe it down and clean it. And then I put a protection, uh, a wax on it. Uh, which actually the shine will go away. But it's, it's just a, it's, it seals the wood and it kind of holds in the moisture. So it makes it hold up a lot longer. Um, you had one crack in the chassis which I know we had talked about. Or right here in this corner. Um, right here was the crack and what I did here was I actually lifted this panel up between each other and I injected glue between it using a syringe and then what I did I put it back down and I used a press to press this back down while it dried so this is all good and solid now um, it shouldn't give you any trouble um, and I'm really happy with the, how that turned out but also just to show you the, the overview of this mini mode just how good it looks like I said, I'm having some issues with my camera lighting here for some reason today. But, uh, at least it seems like I am. Maybe it's not really giving me issues. But, um, you can just kind of see how clean all that is. I took all the knobs off, cleaned everything too. Cleaned the pots. Um, 
but you can kind of walk around here. I'll show you the power cord and everything here as well. Clean the back panel real good. There's your serial number 3064. It's hard to see on this, uh, there it is, 3064. And uh, just kind of cleaned everything up here. There's your new power cord where it installs. It's the same diameter cord as that came on it. So it all fit real nice and neat. And uh, it's a real nice cord. It, I think you're going to be happy with that. Um, but uh, anyways, let me put the camera on the tripod here and I'll walk you through the sounds. I'll show you the dead zone mod as well. Um, and it just, I'm really happy with it. Um, like I say, it's, it turned out really nice. I'm really happy with the coloration of this, uh, of this wood. And uh, I think you're going to be very happy with it here, uh, Jeff. Uh, let me put the camera on the tripod here and I'll walk you through the sound so you can hear just how good this thing sounds as well. Um, I installed a buffer circuit as well in this particular mini mode. It was before they started installing the buffer boards. And what the buffer board does, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about the buffer board. People think, oh, if you put one in, it takes away the value. No, it does not take away the value. Um, and there's a big reason why. The octave switches in these early mini modes interact which means if you're trying to do something with another oscillator in a different range, um, like let's say that you want to go from 32 to 4 on oscillator 2, well if you go to 4, it's, you're going to detune the other oscillators because there was a current drop. And so what the buffer board does is it allows uh, separation, or it keeps current constant. So when you turn these knobs, there's no drops. And it, it allows them not to interact with each other uh, because they're all connected to the same set of resistors and uh, so all the switches are fed the exact same signal and, and that's why you have that. Um, you change loads on those resistors when you change your uh, your octaves is what it really is. It's just a load change and when you change the load it affects the other oscillators because it's taking some off that load. Um, but that, that, all, that solves every bit of that problem. But uh, anyways as you can hear I'll just play it for you. <laughs> oscillator 2 and it didn't affect the other oscillators. <laughs> ranges on some of these especially they're even worse um, but anyways I'll show you the dead zone mod so when we actually bend this wheel you'll hear that what the dead zone mod does it puts a true dead center in your in your pitch wheel so when you're in the detent there's no uh, no frequency interaction it's a true 0, 0.00 volts <laughs> working really well. I will go through each oscillator so you can hear it. Let me open this filter up here. And we'll just start with oscillator 1. So that's oscillator 1. Oscillator 2.
three. Here's your noise source. So that's your noise source. And then also I'll show you the filter. Um, I've calibrated the filter for tracking. So we'll go here and make the filter self oscillate. Pull it at 440 hertz. Tracking's not exactly perfect on the filter, and that's that's actually with these early mini Moogs, the calibration process. To calibrate the filter on these early ones, you have to remove the back cover because the trim pot actually is sideways, and so you can access the trim pot from the back cover. And when you do that, you expose it to ambient temperature. So when you put the lid back on it, now it's heat is is. Uh, basically hold an internal temperature and so it changes the offset of where you calibrate it. So it's really hard to calibrate these early Minimo uh, filters. But, uh, but even worse with the early Trumansburg Minimo because they didn't have a they didn't have a trimmer for that. So it was it was just what it was. But uh, I will show you that the switches here work. We have no tracking. Here's a uh, keyboard control one. Turn off one, turn on two. Put them both on. As you can hear. So that's working really well. I'll show you that the envelope generator or the control is working for the uh, for the filter. Turn that down frequency. So there's your decay, and then you also got your attack. And you've also got your sustain level. That's where you get those percussive kind of sounds. Um, also, your amount of control works. That's actually how much of the control goes into the filter. And also I'll show you that the VCA control works as well. Open this filter up. So that is with a zero decay time. So you got your attack time. Like so. It'll go all the way to 10. I'm not going to turn all the way to 10 because that'll take forever. Um, but same thing here, you got your sustain level. So what the sustain does is it controls how far down the decay time actually goes. Um, so you can still have an offset where you still have audio um, when the decay is finished. Of course then you got your decay switch, which is basically when you let off a note, how long it sustains after you let off a note. Which also, uh, also is uh, linked to the decay time, as you can hear. Glad 
circuit works. <laughs> modulation bus works so we'll make uh, oscillator 3 a low frequency oscillator slow it down here a little bit and then we will uh, engage that to the oscillators you get something like this <laughs> modulation source. modulation uh, mix which engages uh, noise into the, the modulation circuit. Drop the oscillators. So that's noise and you can also control that noise uh, input by the uh, actual uh, noise source like the white or pink noise. So we are pink. So anyway, that's your uh, your modulation uh, mixer. Um, and then we've also got, I'm trying to think if there's anything else here that I talked about. Um, we, you can also engage the same thing here. You can en engage the noise into the oscillators too. So if we go. Sound of mini mode. I'm very happy with it. Um, these early ones, they still are a little drifty. Uh, they, they're just a little different design, but uh, I've done a lot of things to make it more reliable than it has ever been, and that's uh, that's a huge plus. Um, I will just kind of go over a simple sound here. We'll just build a sound so you can hear this thing kind of raw. to the, all the notes are working so we'll just take the sound I go through each key here so you can hear each key Very, very happy with it, like I say. 
and I believe you're going to be very happy with it too, Joe. But uh, anyways, I just want to take a moment and thank you again for letting me restore this thing for you. It's been a real, a real treat. And uh, for all you guys that watch my videos, I really do appreciate you watching. Also, on a side note, um, for those that will be at Super Booth 2019 in Berlin, I will be there. Um, I'm actually going uh, uh, there with Schmidt Synthesizers. And uh, so I look forward to hopefully, sorry for the truck outside, uh, hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. Um, but I'll, I'll be there uh, for, sh for certain and uh, look forward to hopefully meeting some of you guys. But uh, y'all take care. Thanks for watching.